She's extremely rude. He's interrupting us when we're talking. I'll have to speak to Tesla about this. Basically, yeah, I was looking on Facebook yesterday and uh, after all of that nonsense on some of the Facebook groups, I stumbled across this Madman Expo. Um, so Madman is like a distribution sort of platform for uh, all the manga shows. Anime. Manga? manga? Anime. Yeah. They've got this like streaming platform called Anime Lab, um, which Little Kid Collection has an issue with because they're not up to date with the Dragon Ball Super. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, they own that and they also are putting on this show. I don't exactly know what's going to be there. We're hoping it's going to be like a hell of a lot of Dragon Ball stuff. Uh, the Kakarot game is going to be there, so we get to play that super early. So I don't know how many of you actually like Dragon Ball, but we kind of like it. Stephanie doesn't like it, but she's, you know, coming along to show some support, I guess. But anyway, we'll have to play the game. We'll have to see the anime stuff. So we'll let you know how we go. It's fine. There's plenty of anime cat related things that I can enjoy there too. So basically, instead of getting done for copyright infringement, I am treating you to the dulcet tones of my commentary, wherever necessary. Basically, this festival or con is very much for the buyers and the sellers of Melbourne who are interested in anime. There isn't too much in terms of the experience itself. There were no uh, special guests or performers for us to view. But there were so many stalls of different stores from Melbourne and from other states, um, which is great because there are some items that we couldn't get our hands on nearby. And there were also lots of local artists here to show their work. This display here with the SH Figure Arts and Band Presto products was pretty much the only display or booth that you could see and experience. Other than that, it was just all stalls. There was a good balance of manga, of plushies, of figures, collectibles, blind boxes, everything for all sorts of collectors and budgets and price points. Kid Collection was quite disappointed because she wanted to keep collecting her Dragon Ball Z manga in the full colour and unfortunately they were only available in black and white so we're going to have a lot of trouble finding that unless we go on Amazon.
So I love these little Pokeball terrariums that these artists produce. They come to every con that I've ever been to in Melbourne and the amount of detail that goes into them is awesome. Pricing wise, today they were a lot better than other times. Um, I even got one of the bigger ones, which I normally don't because of the price difference. So one of my favorite things about these cons or festivals is seeing all the artists that come and show off their products in their stores, especially the ones who create unique artworks for their t-shirts that you can never find anywhere else. Of the very few experiences that you could have, you could either play trading card games or go to a Tokyo style maid cafe, which I'm not really sure is a good thing. <laughs> One of the biggest stores here was Pop Culture, which a lot of Australians actually use to get their hot toys, but they were here with a lot of more collectible and unique products like these Dragon Ball Z skateboards, which I've never seen before. And here is Kid Collection thinking about getting a metal lunchbox, which we managed to talk her out of. I would love to hear what any international viewers think of our pricing when it comes to figures. As you can see, generally you're looking at paying $300, $400 plus. Comment below what you guys are paying or what you expect to pay. So the last section that we actually visited was the artist section. There are some really talented people here, people who make plushies, people who make badges and pins, jewellery, and of course those who create really cool digital and hand-drawn artwork of their favourite characters and animes and TV shows. Um, it wasn't massive, which um, doesn't surprise me, but we did get a lot of stuff which we're going to show you afterwards. Um, there is a model set or model kit, yeah, sorry, model kit. Yeah. that Justin got um, from Dragon Ball Z, which I think will need a little bit of painting or something to make it just that little bit extra um, because it's a lot of uh, smooth surfaces. So we're going to a hobby shop called... Uh, Metro Hobbies yeah. in the city and there's also another store I think in Box Hill. You always want to paint your model before you assemble. I didn't, I did it completely the other way so I had to like disassemble and then paint and then reassemble. So now it's on the sprues, much easier to paint. I'm going to hopefully get spray as well so I only just have to literally take the sprue, spray the whole thing, 
put a clear coat over it and then assemble. I'm not going to go crazy like for custom paint or whatever. I keep telling myself that I'm not going to buy any more random stuff like model kits and stuff like that, but then here we are. So <laughs> now I'm going to go buy paints for the model kit that I said I wasn't going to buy. So now it's the situation. So anyway, we're going to buy the paints and then when we get home, we'll show you all the stuff that we bought. We didn't buy that much, but we got a few things, a couple of things that the lady at the Madman Collectibles booth said wasn't even out yet, but we managed to buy anyway. So you'll see when we get home. I apologize for the navigation lady. She's extremely rude. She's interrupting us when we're talking. I'll have to speak to Tesla about this. So somehow we kept ending up at more and more toy stores and one of the biggest ones that I've ever been to in any country is Minotaur. It has manga, it has collectibles, blind boxes, plushies, merch from Harry Potter, from DC, from Marvel, from basically any fandom you could ever want. What's this one? This one? I don't know. What do you want? It's $25. You don't want it? There's Raditz, look. Yeah. today it was mostly Dragon Ball Z stuff obviously and it's mostly for kid collection but um, we'll run through the two things that I got which are um, a blind box of these little I guess you call them dioramas or terrarium style little things um, and they're all from the Alolan Pokemon so I'm only really after the Alolan Vulpix I don't really care for the others, maybe the Raichu. So it'd be really disappointing if that's not what I get. 
and it's not. I think it's very green. I think it's that, and I don't even know what it is to be honest because I haven't played the games enough. Yes, yeah, it's, it's this one up the top here, which is a very girly looking thing, not really up my alley, but. It looks like a person. It does. It's a re really feminine looking. Oh, it's like that one that I call Nicki Minaj. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll get back to that one. We're not, yeah, we're not really that excited about that one. The other thing, I did get to pick what I got. And I already have one of these, but a bit smaller, which is a handmade terrarium that these artists do. And they come to all the cons in Melbourne all the time. So I've been keeping my eye out for an Lolan Volpix one. And there it is. I have a smaller one of Pikachu and... I was trying to save money by sticking with the small ones, but they were only $5 more for these bigger ones. So today I splurged the extra $5. And the rest is all Dragon Ball Z. So I don't know how he wants to start. Well, that's my thing. So I only got one thing today and it was this. So it's like a model kit motorcycle. Uh, and then to go with that, there are a bunch of paints that we got from Mr. Hobby in Melbourne. So you saw us obviously Metro talking about- Hobby. Oh, sorry, Metro Hobby. There is a store called Mr. Hobby though, but we didn't go there. Um, so I got some paints. You don't have to really go through the paints, um, but it is one of those sort of snap together build kits for those of you who are interested. Um, and we're gonna put it with our uh, Hong Kong exclusive Bulma that we picked up, the figure arts. So we don't really need to unbox everything, yeah. but you can see a bunch of parts and we'll put that together. And you'll probably see that in the next collection tour if I go over the Dragon Ball stuff. So that's the only thing that I got today. But the little one got like, a whole heap of stuff, more than any of us, in fact. Um, this one I got from Critical Hit in the city. This one isn't from the convention, but it's a Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Um, and it was a on it was a discount, so I got from ten, twenty dollars. Not bad, not bad. So yeah, she got a little discount on that. And then this is the Gogeta, right? Yep. Um, the Gogeta Super Saiyan four. Monkey version. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey version. <laughs> well, he's like the, got the tail and everything. I don't know. I haven't seen GT yet. Um, and then this is half the the set of this thing at the back. Yeah. Um, so you want to tell us what happened with that? Yes. The whole so story. There was this display cabinet, and it had all these cool ones that I really wanted. And so I looked. So it said available in like the Sorry. area, the store thing. Mm. And so I checked, but it wasn't any there. And um, but then I found this, and then they're just like, "Oh, the other one sold out. Everyone only bought the Goku." And then I went to go ask if they had the Goku somewhere else, and they're just like, "Oh no, it hasn't even come out yet." So I'm just like, "So okay. you're angry? You're spicy about it?" Yeah, I'm spicy about it because I wanted the other one. But you got it online. Yeah. She's still getting it. Don't stress out. So it's gonna look like that. When it's done. She got one half, she got the Vegeta, the Goku is on the way. But it is strange that everyone just got the one and apparently they display together on the same base. So it would look really empty if you just got the Goku and they sat by itself on the display. But each their own. Goku is the main character, I guess. Oh, yeah. yes, show the bookmark. Yeah. It's so it's a hand drawn yes. artwork. It is, yeah. And they had a bigger version as well, but I thought it needed a bookmark, so. Oh yes, and you got to play the game, the new game. Give us a, a oh, three second yes. review of the new game. Um, I liked it. Um, wow. Except the can, I, I'm not very good at it. That's it? That's the full review? Yes. Excellent, okay. <laughs> so at the stand, I guess you call it, it was pretty empty, fortunately for us. There weren't that many people queued up to play the game, so we got to play two different versions of the demo. And there was a guy standing there um, giving out these lanyards only to people who were wearing Dragon Ball merch. Reveal. So Justin had a t-shirt on, Kid Collection had a t-shirt on. I clearly do not, but I got one anyway. <laughs> and they also came with a little promotional card for um, Cyberpunk, which is a game I'm really excited about coming out soon too. So um, that's just a little bonus, as well as a manga they gave us. I'll just pull one out quickly. 
So you guys got this at another con anyway, didn't you? I got it in San Diego. You did. Yeah. So there's one side there, the other side there. It's just a bonus in black and white if... Just a little freebie. Yeah. It's good for people who maybe didn't know anything about Dragon Ball, but just happened to be there and this would be a great Kickstarter for someone to get into it. Pretty much. But that is everything that we got today. Um, in terms of Dragon Ball being at the con, there wasn't that much, even though that to me would probably be their biggest market. There was a lot of One Piece stuff, um, My Hero Academia, and then a lot of animes that I don't know about, unfortunately and a little bit of Pokemon and other sort of cute cat-inspired things. How do you feel about Dragon Ball not being the focus of the event? I'm, I'm extremely angry because no one had an easy art except for this one place that I got this bookmark and then this other um, picture that I really wanted, but it didn't, it was sold out and I'm extremely furious <laughs> because I, that was, I was really looking forward to that. So we grabbed her business card anyway. She said she's going to put that picture up online on her website so that we can purchase it later. Um, but she sold out of all the coloured versions of the artwork that you wanted. There was only the black and white one left, which she has a lot of cool black and white artwork anyway, but that wasn't your aesthetic. All right, let's rapid fire. Review of the vent uh, out of 10. You first, go. Oh, um... Three, two, one, go. Seven. I'm gonna give it a six. It wasn't that big. I'm gonna give it a four. Yeah. No, five. Yeah. Five from me. I mean, compared to any other con in any <coughs> other country, which I think, you know, having not seen one, I assume is still gonna be way bigger than anything we get in Melbourne. It's still run pretty well because Mad Men's a really big company. Um, but Australia just in general doesn't have that big of a fan base of anime and manga in the first place. So the scale was proportionate to what we should have expected. And how can they improve? Um, more Z stuff. More? Z artwork. Excellent. And better Z stuff. Because they just have like old things that I already have. I want new things. More Dragon Ball. Yes. Old Dragon Ball. And more Dragon Ball comics. Uh, there's a lot, but there's not the full color one that I wanted. The only one that wasn't there. I'm furious about that as well. Spicy. But thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully there was plenty of things there for you to see. Um, next, no, in two weeks we're going to New York Comic Con. So that will probably be the next big video series that we're going to do. Um, so look forward to that. I hope you guys like, comment and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next video.